Level zero. Before we get to real black holes, let's talk about the fakes. Objects so extreme, they mimic black holes, but don't quite qualify. These are the imposters, and they can be just as terrifying. The most well-known are neutron stars, the ultra-dense cores left behind when massive stars explode. Just a teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh billions of tons, and their gravity is so intense it warps space-time. They can spin hundreds of times per second and blast out beams of radiation like cosmic lighthouses. Then there are quark stars, which are even denser, and still hypothetical. Scientists believe if you crush a neutron star even further, it might collapse into something made entirely of quarks. These would be smaller, heavier, and potentially hotter than anything else in the universe. If they exist, we haven't caught one yet, or we didn't recognize it in time. And then there's the truly weird stuff. Gravistars, boson stars, and other exotic matter configurations. These aren't confirmed, but they're theoretically possible. Strange, dark objects that could behave like black holes without having an actual singularity. Some theories suggest they could be mistaken for black holes in gravitational wave data. The key difference? These imposters don't have an event horizon, that invisible boundary where not even light can escape. Which means, in theory, you could study them up close without getting pulled into oblivion. But don't relax yet. Because once we leave level zero, we're done with imitators. And what comes next isn't pretending to be a black hole. It is one. Level one. Now we enter black hole territory. But not the kind you're thinking of. Primordial black holes are among the strangest and most mysterious objects ever theorized. Unlike other black holes that form from dying stars, these would have been born just after the Big Bang, forged from pockets of incredibly dense matter, collapsing under their own gravity in a chaotic, early universe. How small are we talking? Some primordial black holes might have been the size of a proton, but with the mass of a mountain. Others may have been the mass of a planet, but no bigger than a grain of sand. These things are small, dark, and fast. And if they exist, they could be zipping through the galaxy right now, completely invisible to us. Some scientists believe primordial black holes could account for dark matter, the invisible stuff that makes up most of the universe's mass. Since these micro black holes don't emit light and are almost impossible to detect directly, they'd be the perfect candidates for dark matter's elusive nature. But here's the terrifying part. A tiny black hole moving through space at cosmic speeds doesn't need to be massive to cause damage. If one passed through Earth, it wouldn't swallow the planet, but it might leave a wake of destruction, tremors, collapsed matter, even subtle shifts in planetary orbits, and we'd never see it coming. Stephen Hawking once theorized that these tiny black holes might evaporate over time, releasing bursts of radiation in their final moments, what we call Hawking radiation. If true, some could be vanishing today somewhere in deep space as faint flashes of high-energy light. They're ancient, they're invisible, and they may already be closer than we think. But now we go bigger. Because level 2 is where stars die, and real black holes begin to consume. Level 2. At level 2, black holes stop being theory and start being real. These are the black holes we've actually detected, not just imagined. They form when a massive star collapses in on itself after burning through all its fuel. The core implodes under the weight of gravity, and if the star is big enough, it becomes a stellar mass black hole. These black holes usually weigh 5 to 50 times the mass of our sun, but they're squeezed into a space barely larger than a city. That means their gravity is extreme. Get too close and escape becomes impossible. Not even light can outrun it. That's why they appear black. And yes, they eat. Some of these black holes exist in binary systems, paired with a normal star. As the black hole pulls in gas from its companion, the material forms a swirling accretion disk that heats up and glows in X-rays. That's how we found Cygnus X1, one of the first stellar mass black holes ever discovered. It's constantly feeding and glowing like a monster, hiding behind a spotlight. Others make their presence known through gravitational waves. When two stellar black holes spiral toward each other and collide, they send ripples through space-time itself. These were first detected in 2015 by LIGO, confirming not just the existence of black holes, but their ability to merge and grow. What makes these black holes terrifying is that they're common, scattered across our galaxy, often hidden in plain sight. Some are dormant, invisible, waiting. Astronomers estimate that millions of stellar mass black holes are drifting silently through the Milky Way right now. Compared to the hypothetical tiny monsters of level one, these are confirmed killers. They are formed from real stars and real explosions, and in many cases, they're still feeding. But as dangerous as they are, they're only middleweight. Because next up is something bigger, rarer, and harder to find. Welcome to level 3. 
The black holes we didn't even know existed. Level 3. Level 3 is where things start to get suspicious. For years, scientists believed black holes came in just two sizes. Stellar mass black holes, created from collapsed stars, and supermassive black holes, millions or billions of times more massive, lurking in the centers of galaxies. But that left a massive gap in the middle. Enter the Intermediate Mass Black Holes, or IMBHs, cosmic ghosts that should exist but have spent decades playing hide-and-seek with astronomers. These black holes range from around 100 to 100,000 times the mass of our sun, filling the space between stellar killers and galactic monsters. They're rare, quiet, and almost impossible to detect. Why? Because unlike stellar black holes, they don't often have nearby stars to feed on. And unlike the supermassive kind, they don't sit in the heart of active galaxies. Most of the time, they're floating silently through space, dark and undisturbed. But recently, we've started to catch glimpses. One of the best pieces of evidence came from a cluster called but Omega Centauri, where a black hole with about 8,200 solar masses was discovered. In another case, scientists spotted an X-ray flash from a black hole ripping apart a star in a distant galaxy. The estimated mass? Somewhere between 50,000 and 100,000 suns. And here's the twist. Intermediate mass black holes might be the building blocks of the supermassive ones. Imagine small black holes merging over time, stacking up mass until they become the monsters, anchoring galaxies. Or worse, imagine one floating through deep space, rogue and hungry, drifting between galaxies with no light, no warning, and no escape once you're near. Level 3 is terrifying not because of what we know, but because of what we still don't. These black holes sit in the dark middle ground of our understanding, growing, hiding, waiting. But if level 3 black holes are hiding in the shadows, then level 4 is where they step into the spotlight and take over entire galaxies. Level 4. If stellar black holes are killers and intermediate mass ones are ghosts, then the level 4 black holes are tyrants and they rule galaxies. Supermassive black holes are the giants of the cosmos. They weigh anywhere from a million to tens of billions of times the mass of our sun, and they sit at the center of almost every large galaxy, including our own. Their size is incomprehensible. Imagine a black hole the size of our entire solar system, and then multiply that by a few million. The one in our galaxy is called Sagittarius A. It's about four million solar masses, and it's sitting quietly at the heart of the Milky Way. It's not close enough to suck us in. But the fact that it exists, anchoring everything around it, is haunting. Our entire solar system, along with billions of other stars, is basically orbiting a monster. But Sagittarius A is tame compared to some others. In 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope gave us the first image of a black hole, M87. This behemoth, in the center of the Virgo galaxy cluster, weighs 6.5 billion solar masses. The shadow it casts is larger than our entire solar system, and it's not sleeping. Many supermassive black holes are actively feeding. As gas and dust swirl around them, they light up the galaxy's center in a glowing fury called a quasar. Some of the brightest objects in the universe, from billions of light years away, they shine so brightly they outshine all the stars in their galaxies combined. That glow? It's material being ripped apart and consumed. But here's where things get weird. We're finding supermassive black holes in the early universe, just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. That doesn't make sense. These black holes should have taken billions of years to grow that big, unless something is wrong with how we think the universe works. Some scientists think intermediate mass black holes may have merged faster than expected. Others think there might have been a direct collapse from massive gas clouds. Either way, it's rewriting cosmic history. And if that wasn't enough, these monsters don't just sit still. When galaxies collide, their central black holes spiral toward each other and eventually merge. Two supermassive black holes crashing together is a cosmic event beyond imagination. It distorts space-time itself, releasing gravitational waves on a scale we've never seen before. So yes, supermassive black holes are real. They're active, they're ancient, and they are everywhere. But what happens when two black holes meet and don't just orbit each other but devour each other? That's level five and it's about to shake the entire universe. Level 5. You might think black holes just sit in space, swallowing whatever drifts too close. But some of them do something far more violent. They collide. Welcome to level 5, where black holes don't just consume. They merge. When two black holes get caught in each other's gravity, they begin to spiral inward. It's a slow, deadly dance that can last millions of years. But when they finally collide, the impact is so powerful, it literally shakes the fabric of the universe. 
These are called binary black holes, and their final moments create bursts of energy known as gravitational waves. You can't see them with your eyes, but instruments like LIGO and Virgo can detect these ripples in space-time as they pass through Earth. And we've already caught them. In 2015, scientists made history by detecting the first gravitational wave signal from a black hole merger. Two stellar mass black holes, each dozens of times heavier than the sun, collided over a billion light years away. The signal lasted just a fraction of a second, but in that blink, they released more energy than all the stars in the universe combined. For that moment, they were the loudest thing in existence. Since then, dozens more collisions have been detected. Some of them involved black holes bigger than we thought possible. Others revealed unexpected behavior like highly tilted spins or weird masses that don't fit any category. And it doesn't stop with stellar mass black holes. Theoretically, supermassive black holes can merge too. And when they do, the resulting gravitational waves would be so massive, they'd rumble across the cosmos for millions of years. We haven't caught one of those yet, but we're listening. Because when two invisible monsters come together and become one, the universe doesn't stay silent. It roars. But as devastating as that is, there's still one more level. And it's the strangest, most reality-breaking kind of black hole we can imagine. Welcome to level six, the ones that shouldn't exist at all. Level six. We've reached the edge, where science ends and speculation begins. Level 6 isn't about what we know, it's about what might exist just beyond our understanding. These are the exotic black holes, the ones that break the rules, or rewrite them entirely. Let's start with the naked singularity. Normally, a black hole hides its singularity, the point of infinite density, behind an event horizon. But a naked singularity would expose it directly, creating a region where the laws of physics cease to make sense. Space and time would unravel in unpredictable ways. If one exists, we wouldn't just be in danger. Our understanding of cause and effect could collapse. Then there are white holes, the theoretical opposite of black holes. Instead of sucking everything in, white holes would violently spit matter out, refusing to let anything enter. Some scientists think white holes might be connected to black holes via wormholes, forming shortcuts across the universe. If true, black holes could be more than cosmic traps. They could be doors. There are also theories about quantum black holes, Planck scale black holes, and even artificial black holes, tiny versions potentially created in particle accelerators. Don't worry, none have destroyed Earth yet. But the idea that humans could one day engineer a black hole? That's the stuff of sci fi and maybe future wars. But here's the strangest possibility of all some believe that what we call black holes aren't black holes at all, but something else entirely. Objects like gravistars or boson stars could mimic black hole behavior without having a singularity at their core. That would mean everything we've assumed about event horizons, entropy, hawking radiation could be wrong. And don't forget the rumors, unidentified gravitational signals, odd bursts of radiation, mysterious fast radio bursts, all unexplained and all possibly linked to exotic cosmic objects we don't yet understand. Level 6 is terrifying not because of what we know, but because of how much we don't. If any of these theories are real, I even one, then black holes aren't just engines of destruction. They're portals, paradoxes, problems that break the universe itself. And the scariest part? We might not even see them coming.